Hey there, friends. This is Donnie back with you at 3F Farm. Man, it's hard to believe we're already on week six of our 10-week series, Spiritually Sufficient and Locally Sustainable. This week, we're going to be talking about living water. So we'll start out with giving you some tips about physical water, how to reuse, reduce, and reclaim it. Uh, we'll show you how to filter some water. We'll give you some tips and tricks. If you remember back in week four of the elements, I'm talking about a site survey. We'll help you out figure where your watershed's at, uh, where the water flows on your property, and then as well in the area so you know how to use it to your advantage. Uh, we'll also give you some videos on flood insurance this week. Uh, us living here north of Houston and in the Gulf Coast, uh, flooding is a major concern. We had two inches of rain just yesterday on an afternoon thunderstorm. Uh, so we'll help you out and see if you need some flood insurance, give you some advice on where to go and how to make sure you're fully insured. Uh, but really the ultimate goal of this week, talking about living water, it has to do with the spiritual sufficiency part of our vision here at the farm. And it really reminds me of the story and the encounter of Jesus and the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4. Um, a little bit of background about the Samaritans. So they were actually a, a racially mixed people. Um, they were from the, the northern kingdom of Israel, but they were Jews that had uh, intermarried with pagans, and so they had a pagan ancestry. Um, and in some aspect, they were very monotheistic, but uh, the Jews, you know, despised and hated the Samaritans, and it was a, a mutual um, hatred, if you will. So when a lot of the ordinary Jews, when they would travel around, they would actually take the long way around Samaria um, to avoid the people totally. And it really it sticks out not only the the spiritual side of it, but kind of what we're facing today that we so much uh, want to want to avoid certain people or certain things and aspects that we'd rather take the long way around than having a discussion and love other people. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Um, he made a purpose when he was preaching. He wouldn't go the long way around. He'd go through Samaria and, and, and engage uh, because he loved everybody. And we are called as Christians to do the same. So, you know, what happened in John 4 Jesus was tired. He'd been preaching. The Pharisees were after him. So he came to a well of Samaria, and he was, he was thirsty. And there was a woman there um, filling up her pitchers, and uh, he asked her for a drink. And she, she was taken back because uh, who was this that a Jew is going to ask a Samaritan woman for a, a drink? And he said, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me for living water, and I'd give it to you. And she wondered what the living water was. And what is this, Lord? How can, how can I have it? Um, and he said, you, you have to ask for it. Um, so she was wondering, you know, the well's deep and I don't have anything to, to draw with. How do I get this living water? Um, and the, Jesus and the Samaritan woman had a conversation. He ended up telling her to, to go get her husband. And, you know, she said, I don't have a husband. He said, you're right. You know, you've had five husbands before and the guy you're with now isn't your husband. And she thought he was a, a prophet. Um, and he said, you know, I'm the Messiah. That's who I am. She she believed in the Messiah and um, that he was coming back as a as a Jew, but then also she didn't know it was Jesus. And there there was a moment in the story when Jesus said, "You know, you're not going to worship God on this mountaintop. You're not going to worship Him in, in Jerusalem because you don't know what you're worshiping. But really, you have to worship God in spirit and truth because God is a spirit. So when we talk about the spiritual sufficiency." We're totally inadequate to worship God or worship anything without worshiping in spirit and worshiping in truth. So Jesus told the Samaritan woman to go back into town and tell the story of her interaction with Jesus. And that's exactly what she did. She, she told uh, everybody in town that there was a Messiah there that had living water. And that's really what we're called to do as Christians, not only to love other people and to love our neighbors, uh, but to go tell everyone that's hurting, that's really thirsty, uh, how they can get eternal water and tell them about their story with Jesus, tell them about our encounter with Jesus. It's nothing more complicated than that. Um, it's nothing to be fearful of that if we're rejected by people or if uh, we don't tell the story right, because it's our story, right? And uh, it's just a Samaritan woman. She had a story to tell. She had a encounter with Jesus, and she couldn't keep it into herself because everybody needed the living water. So that's what we're going to focus this week on. We're not only going to tell you about Jesus and the living water, and once you drink from him, you'll never thirst again. Even on a hot day like today with my son hat on, I'm going to go drink some water because I'm thirsty, my throat's dry. But in Christ, 
we have eternal living water and we'll never be thirsty again. So stick with us this week. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Check out all our latest updates on social media at 3FFarmTX. Let us know what comments you have, how we can pray for you, and how we can give you some valuable information this week. Talk to you later.